Maybe made a new video called and people were hating on solo leveling. Again, I think the people hating on solo leveling just see that if they say something bad about a popular opinion on Twitter, suddenly their impressions go up, their notification blows up, makes them feel good until they click in and they say, it's just a bunch of 12 year olds just fucking sh throwing shit at each other. But let's see what Shibi has to say. I think if this tells us anything is that gotcha games should take notes. Like, if they were- Gotcha games should take notes on- no! Gotcha Games should not take notes on this! What the fuck are you- Imagine you forgot to do your dailies in Genshin Impact or Honkai Star Rail or fucking Epic 7 or some of the mobile games I'm playing and you get fucking punished by fucking having to fight, like, just run and survive against the fucking centipede and death- No! Gotcha Games should not be looking at this anime! We're capable of coming into our reality and messing You're insane! With They'll be like, yeah, you're gonna be doing this. If you don't do your dailies for your, like, Honkai Star Rail or, you know- He's even fucking directly saying, like, you, you, you want us to suffer? Genshin Impact, you're gonna be forced to run absolute mile. Guarantee you, as soon as you do that, it's just gonna be a brigade of people fucking review bombing the App Store, one star fucking review, trash game, trash game. No, Chibi, what are you doing? To not die from like a claw. I straight up didn't do my Genshin and Honkai Star Rail dailies this morning because I got a, I got up late to fucking stream. I, I know I don't want to survive for that a centipede or something because soul leveling is legitimately the embodiment of that like you miss your dailies you're going to absolutely pay how about we get rid of fucking dailies and this fucking weird twisted psychology gotcha games does on you with these dailies thinking you're gonna miss out if you don't log in log in bonus you gotta get you know seven consecutive login bonus to get a copy of this character it's like no fucking get rid of that shit just make it weeklies instead and just half everything. Instead of doing a dungeon twice, just give me time one time. Like, make it easier. But if you fucking do this shit, we're getting off topic. Gotcha games, like, I don't think they would do well. I think the fucking player base would fucking revolt. Honestly, an amazing episode. Like, this episode of Soul Leveling is even better than episode one and episode two. Really? Re re everybody is saying episode three is better than episode... I mean, it's not everybody. It's So far, it's just been Brandon reviews and Chibi. I feel like episode three was more interesting because it explained a lot more about the world. But episode two, I felt like just on a personal enjoyment level, all the stuff from that episode delivered much more to me. But then again, maybe I'm just self-reporting that I'm a monkey and I just enjoy hype things happening rather than the intricate writing and the world building that they're just sprinkling in. Yeah, I'm a monkey. Because now we finally get into what soul leveling is actually about. It is about the leveling. world of just this world of soul leveling for our main character becoming a game to him. Like he has a stat window. Mm -hmm. He's able to upgrade his stats like he even shows in this episode, like strength stat. And I'll talk more about that because it's pretty funny. But I think that PER there is perception, right? And you can even see the icon of like a head and just like fucking Wi-Fi signs going around it. But basically like... I don't know, your intuition, perception, your just awareness. But, like, the entire world is just a game now to him. Like, yeah. you know, it's clearly his only life, but uh, he now can continuously get stronger and stronger. Which and again, this is not Second Awakening. This is, like, Infinite Awakening, because Second Awakening implies that, hey, once the portals open and people got their powers, you, you're put on a certain stat, like your E rank or your D rank, and you're stuck there. But then Second Awakening is, okay, you get to jump once more, but that's it. It's just that one more jump. Maybe you go from D to C rank. That's Second Awakening. But Sung Jung Mu, what he's doing is continuously fucking rising up the rankings depending on what this level cap is. So this is like Infinite Awakening, if there even is a term for this. Which is a nice little addition because everything that was established in the previous episodes with the world building, like the first episode focus to episode two, is that when a hunter has an awakening, you know, their stats are static. They can't Fixed. get stronger. Yep. The only thing they can really upgrade is actually their items, unless they have a second awakening. The thing about their items, they ha we haven't really gone into detail about gear yet, and I wonder how they're going to incorporate this gear system into this game, but interesting. Like, even if people are stuck at certain ranks, like some items I would imagine would be able to, you know, carry you a little bit more so that even if you couldn't, if you're like a C rank, you know, hunter that can't do B rank dungeons, but somehow you're able to get an A rank weapon. Now, I don't know if a C rank is allowed to w equip an A rank weapon due to, you know, no fucking stat, you know, restrictions or whatnot, but would, would it be able to carry them? I don't know. Awakening, and we get a reveal that that is super rare. It's not something that happens, but the only way our main character would have been able to survive that dungeon from episode one and episode two 
would have been to have a second awakening. But clearly, he was unaware of his second awakening, and you know they. He didn't even second awaken though, right? Because the points was still meter the, the the measure the the machine thing. It was like you're still at ten points, right? Because he didn't second awaken. He just unlocked this ability to become a player and to continuously awaken as his levels go up. Thought that he didn't have one, and it was just a lucky chance that he survived. So having our main character's world turn into like a game to where he can now upgrade stats, it shows he's able to go beyond the limits of like a normal hunter. He's able to continuously get stronger and continuously go up the mm -hmm. rankings where he could probably even challenge S-class hunters Maybe even beyond S-Class, right? People are hyping that kind of shit up, that there's a tier beyond S-Class. ...in this verse. It's pretty interesting, honestly. Now, fundamentally, getting into the actual, like, I guess, main essence of what soul leveling is as a story... Just leveling. ...it is a power fantasy. You and just I farm. think that this very interaction here is a good example of that. That, you know, anyone that enjoys a good grinding session within a game, you know, seeing your stat sheet going higher and higher, getting stronger and stronger, like, yeah. if you're fighting a boss, and let's say this boss absolutely just annihilates you, just rips you apart and no worries just go farm for fucking 10 hours hunting a bunch of boars level up you come back you fucking dunk on him back and you feel good until you realize what the fuck am i doing with my life you're like you know what okay then instead of like forcing yourself up against it like a brick wall, you know, you decide to go kill lower level mobs yep. and you increase your strength by another 40 points or something. Yep. You come back to the boss and you just one tap the boss. And you're like, yeah, that's what you get. You know, anyone that enjoys that type of like combat of just getting stronger, the feel of getting stronger is absolutely just going to enjoy this episode of Soul. Yeah, I think um, it's, it's the whole progression part that's very enjoyable. Something that's so compelling about Starting from nowhere, being able to grind and see your numbers go up, bigger damage, you feel better about yourself, you go to the next thing. But at the end of the day, this like um pleasure, this um satisfaction, the fulfillment that comes from progressing kind of like goes away once you start to kind of like realize that it's just like this loop of get stronger so you can farm faster, so you can get stronger, so you can farm faster. So you can get stronger. So you know what I mean? It's just like you go to the next thing. You do the same thing over and over. It gets a little bit stale. And then you start to actually question. It's like, why am I playing this game? That's at least the 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 trajectory, the life cycle of whenever I start an MMO or a new game like this. And like, what, what am I doing with my life? That's why I just become a degenerate. I just start gambling on gacha, 2D waifus, and Honkai Star Rail, and Genshin Impact instead because I'm empty inside. That's right. Leveling, because it really does feel like that. It's like a guy that, you know, just starts off at level one or soul level one in a Dark Soul series yeah. and just gets stronger and stronger. Now, besides all of that, though, let's actually talk about what this episode sets up in terms of story. What does so it besides do? Besides the world just becoming a game, there's more to it than just that. Like, you know, our character is able to open up a random loot box, a.k.a. Instant. Gacha system, yeah. and it can give him random items, which he talks about how he got, like, bandages and stuff, and then one item that came out was this key. And this key that he got allows him to go into an instanced dungeon. And anyone that knows about instanced dungeons... Just fucking go to level up, BB. It's 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 just like a nice stage that you can just go and farm, just buy yourself presumably, and then you just get out and you get rewards and easy. From like RPGs and stuff, know that instance dungeons are usually just like by yourself. You you yeah. go in by yourself. It's static. Nobody else can kind of intervene. But so no hunters can see this either, because like normally humans are coming out of the portal because like obviously this is a subway station. But if like other hunters were around, would they even would they? act the same as like a normal pedestrian? I wonder about that. Because it's for a certain party. And since our character is by himself, he's the only one that can really participate in this dungeon. He clearly has a very special privilege that not many hunters honestly have. Because, because he's a player. And what does a player mean? A player means that you're playing a game. And who created the game? Why is nobody talking about this? Because from what we know of the world of getting into like a dungeon is a gate opens up and you got to go into the gate and then you got to clear it before the dungeon has a dungeon break and then the world can potentially die thanks to I wonder if these instance dungeon will also have a dungeon break to it so him being able to open up these gates and stuff it's like is this possible for other people? Has other people been doing this within the story of... If there are other players that unlocked the ability to obviously become said player, then yes, but I don't know. And the fact that this show, like, the English translation is solo leveling, but the Korean um, translation, the, 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 way, the, the way that it's structured in Korean is literally 
only I level, which implies that Sung Jing Mu is the only player in this game. Soul level. I don't, is I don't he know. the only one that is this powerful or has these abilities? There's so many questions, honestly, that come to mind with Episode 3 of Soul Leveling, and I like that because it's like one of the strongest things about the series is not just the power fantasy, but the world, because you're yes. constantly wondering what's going on out there. What is the absolute limit? Why is a system like this? Yeah, and what is a player? What is a game? Chibi asked the question, but he knows though, right? Obviously, he doesn't want to... He Yeah, of all pe uh, he is not an enemy only, so I doubt he wants to push the conversations towards that direction because that feels a little bit spoiler territory. You know, but it's anime only can also kind of think about stuff like that too. It's not like... Am I am I crazy? Isn't everyone else like talking about this shit too? About you know what what is a player? What is a game? Who who created this game? Is this a simulation? Or is everybody just fucking enjoying this show, just going hyped and just fucking going crazy whenever Sung Jimu does something crazy? And I'm I'm just a fucking schizo in my own little corner, just theorizing about this bullshit. Well, who's giving him this power? Really? What were those statues that were there to you know challenge our MC? Like I said, just so many questions. Why did the statues all disappear? I don't know. So many mysteries, and I think that's fundamentally what's really good with a story, to keep you on your toes and make you always wondering what's going to happen next. And that's exactly what happens. And I feel like a lot of people that, you know, watch this episode of Soul Leveling is probably going to legitimately be very, very upset with the conclusion. Because yeah. the ending of the episode... What is this bullshit cliffhanger fighting this red fucking dog, bro? It basically just ends right here where he's challenging this wolf and we cut to the credits. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it felt like it was a cliffhanger, but it felt very anticlimactic as a cliffhanger. Well, maybe not so anticlimactic if you're in the perspective of Sung Jae Moo because this is life or death, but in the grand scheme of things, what the fuck is this red wolf with the fucking iron scrap jaw, right? It's fucking nothing, but you know, it, in his current level, it, it is like a life or death. It's like, it's like a live or die situation. And it's just like, really? You're going to end the episode right here? It sucks, honestly. Like, thankfully, I am a novel reader, and I have read the webcomic. Yeah, he knows everything. I could not imagine being an anime only watching this, and then that was my cliffhanger. I know for a fact I'd be raging, and I yeah! would probably instantly go out of my way to read the original source. I, I know I would. That, that I can't. The fucking... The shittiest thing about being a reaction, and I don't like to complain about my my little hobby i do on youtube fucking i'm just watching anime on fucking youtube like what like what's there to complain about but one of the biggest things that sucks about becoming a reaction channel is that you can no longer read manga or the source material unless you're reading stuff that's already been covered because you want to keep things to be as authentic and as like first time blind reaction as possible right sure some things are going to get spoiled and in the upcoming solo leveling episodes there's going to be a specific line Motherfuckers have been spoiling me that since like four months out whenever I watched the Geek video and any news video about Soul Leveling. It is what it is. But like one of the shittiest things is that like you are basically burdens and you can no longer read new things, watch new animes just by yourself in the, in, in, it, because you just think that, oh shit, I could be making content out of it. Again, no point to fucking, you know, complain about this. I'm just fucking watching anime on YouTube. Like, what What the fuck am I complaining about? That's exactly what I would do, thanks to just the conclusion of this episode. But um, let's back up for a second, and let's talk about a few things. Okay. So our main character has daily quests, which I briefly mentioned at the beginning Boo. of my video here, that he can do. And these strength trainings that he does, he can get, like, a lot stronger, where he can allocate points into different stats, like strength, agility, luck, whatever. And clearly, There's right no now, luck, he's though. using strength as a dump stat. He's just dumping all of his points into strength to just get stronger. And you kind of... If he went all in on intelligence, just, just, just let's just meme around for a bit, right? If he went all in on intelligence, would he have suddenly learned how to use, like, fireball, you know, wind magic? I don't know. You would think that intelligence would scale with those stuff like that, but I'm just thinking, what if he just becomes smart, right? He just, like, became really smart and was able to, like, memorize shit and just, like, got him to critically think better. And he went into this instance dungeon and he still wasn't able to fight those goblins and just dies. Could you fucking imagine? <laughs> like, maybe going into strength was the right idea here. You know what? I, I think that is actually very smart to do because, like, if you went in on into like, like, think about it. What the fuck is intellect gonna do? Like, immediately off the bat with no gear or no nothing and presumably he has no spells either. Like, if he unlocks some magic powers after putting some stats into intellect then yes he could probably do something but like think about a situation where he goes to the instance dungeon to fight these goblins 
<laughs> and and he 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 wasted his stats on intellect and he has no fighting capability. He can't like fight. That would be fucking insane. That'd be hilarious. See how much he's grown stronger when he holds like an apple and he just crushes it with his hand like it's nothing. It's just like it's Oh, he crushed that apple like it's nothing. <laughs> like a balloon to him, so to speak. And it shows that yes, his physical, you know, limits are getting higher and higher, and he's able to do things that he normally was not able to do. Yeah, and is he getting taller? People are saying that because so Sung Jung Woo is like, okay, hey, here's the mental gymnastics of people that justify how he got this K-pop surgery without getting surgery. Is that, oh, he's training, bro. He got to put his points into different stats. And maybe if he puts it into strength, he's going to become a little bit more buffer, maybe taller. But like, bro, no amount of fucking training push-ups running can just change your facial structure like that. Maybe he just look masking, bro. Maybe he's just fucking mewing the entire time. And it makes you wonder, if he takes these daily quests, he continues to put points into different stats, is there really a limit? Because we got to think about this. When it comes to RPGs, there always is a limit to a stat. Level like cap. stat usually yeah. 99. You know, the vital uh, vitality stat could be 99, etc. Like there could be like a soft cap too, right? In Elden Ring or the Souls game, there's like a soft cap of some stats so that there's like diminishing returns after a certain point of allocation. They probably won't go into stuff like that, right? Like sometimes it's a waste of stats to just keep putting it into one thing because you pretty much hit the threshold and you pretty much get everything out of it. You might as well, you know, level up your other stats to kind of balance it out. Like, the, the stat limit usually can be 99. Some games can go up to 999. Some games only go up to 50. It, it really depends. And if you're D&D, &D, technically 20 could be really the limit. So it's just like, when you think about all these different stats, what really is his limit? How far can he go Who knows? until he hits a brick wall? Is it infinite? nothing else that he actually can do. Which kind of gives more fuel to that feeling of a power fantasy. How far can his strength actually get? So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I think episode three is a good way to kind of start the, the show, and it really kind of showcases what this series is actually going to be about from this solo leveling. Just leveling solo. Point onward, our character getting stronger and stronger. Now, in terms of art and animation, this it was a very simpler episode. Like, there was a few action sequences, like our MC here running through the desert from a giant centipede trying to eat him. But yeah. Thanks, Chibi. Now fucking Honkai Star Rail and Genshin Impact are gonna fucking kill me like this if I skip my dailies. But I mean, overall, it was a very simple and laid-back episode in comparison to, like, The animation versus the goblins, if you, go, if you guys go back to that fight scene again, like, I felt like it was really well done. And they didn't have to, because these are fucking random goblins. Like, these aren't, like, endgame bosses. You don't- you shouldn't be focusing your budget on that, but if you look at that scene again, I like I replayed it during my reaction. It was so fluid. Something about the fight choreography, none of it was like PowerPoint, you know, just like little still frames. Everything had motion in it. And I'm like, damn, like these are just random goblin fighting. Like, imagine, and we've already seen it in episode two, but like the future fights. And in the opening, the fight scenes are like in the opening, obviously they're gonna put the best fights and the best animation, right? To kind of hype the audience up. But if the goblin fighting is this good, then I think for the future we're looking pretty good. So two that had a lot of movement and animation, and I think that's fine because I think the main focus, the core focus of the episode, World was building. just kind of setting the you know the foundations yep. for our main characters, you know, overall strength training. But um, that's honestly about it. It's a good episode, and you know that's all I really want to say right now. I I like soul leveling. I think that the anime now at this current point it is starting to go beyond like the the I guess the. Change the initial that hype part the web comic had like for instance it's uh becoming better it's a better version than what the web comic is because now we have movement art anime that's it's so funny chibi's staying, saying stuff like this and i'm not saying he's wrong nor that he's right these are all opinions but there are people that comes into my like um comment section this one dude was like i'm sincerely so sorry that people like this guy and this guy is me exists that has to experience solo leveling for the first time watching this anime the anime is so bad compared to the source material i'm like but shut the fuck up and just like great voice acting i'm glad to see that because it's not often you see a anime adaptation able yeah. to go beyond it's like webcomic or she be a little thing i think you put the end screens a little bit too early if the end screens were visible during the last 10 seconds then you know i could still see what he's saying but basically guys Give him a like, subscribe to his channel if you haven't, 
And solo leveling, this episode 3, I think it did really well on the world building aspect. It gets us really ingrained into this world. More than just the random, you know, hype bait of, oh, wow, new shows coming out. Look at all these crazy fights. But if you could survive this episode 3 and you actually enjoy the details, I say that you're fucking in for the ride. And, and remember, the hype hasn't even really started. Because episode 1 and 2, it was just a prologue. It's like a little tutorial scene of what's to be. Imagine in the future, man, the actual serious episodes, ooh, you know it's gonna cook.